it turns out the jobs number was pretty good. Not as much as they predicted. It was at 209. And the last two, two cycles, they reduced the total amount by 109,000 jobs or so after they did their recalculation for the last two previous months. But still, but still, it is still going through the roof, employment, right? Now, what has happened as well is as we've gotten more employment for a change, wages have started to increase as well. So here we go. I want to play this for you and then we'll take it on the other side. The president was quick to praise the latest jobs report from the Labor Department earlier today, saying, quote, this is Bidenomics in action. Unemployment dropped to 3.6 in June, nearly its lowest level in years. The U.S. economy added 209,000 jobs, fewer than expected. So what does that mean for interest rates? Joining me now is NBC News business and data reporter Brian Chung. So... Fewer than expected. Does that mean that we will not see another rate hike coming? Yeah, Wall Street uh, economists were expecting somewhere closer to 240,000. So 209,000 did come in shorter than estimates. And I want to walk you through the numbers before we get to what the Federal Reserve might do in response to it. Again, slower pace in the May uh, 300,000 uh, clip that we saw in the month prior. But again, as you mentioned, the unemployment rate at 3.6% still historically low. We saw a lot of the job gains specifically in leisure and hospitality, professional and business services, but we did see contraction in retail trade. Think of jobs at the mall falling by about 11,000 in the month. But what the Federal Reserve is going to be watching for is this figure right here. This is wage growth. How much did wages increase between June of this year and June of last year? It rose by 4.4%. That's a faster pace than the 4.3% we saw in the May to May period prior. And because of that, the Federal Reserve might be asking, well, might employers pass on these higher costs to Americans, which could keep inflation high. That's one reason why the expectation is that the Fed will likely continue to raise interest rates with one more when they meet next, uh, when they meet in their next meeting, uh, which is going to be coming up in the end of this month, Katie. Also, an interesting number that came out of the jobs report is that um, uh, Generation X, I yes, was Gen confused, X, X it's <laughs> and Z, so I'm going to be clear. It's generation X, yeah. X is, is the generation responsible for all of the increases in the unemployed population over the last half a year. What, what's happening with that? Yeah. Well, what's interesting is that, uh, you know, baby boomers have been retiring, but it seems like Gen X has also been ac accounting for a lot of the increase as well. Politico reporting that. But interestingly, there are certain demographics that have been uh, kind of not beneficiaries of the broad job gain increases. For example, the black unemployment rate actually ticked up to 6%. Uh, that is almost double the 3.6 national average. So that's something we're going to have to watch in the coming months as well, Katie. We, we now, spend it's important for us to understand what this guy is saying. He's saying we have a good economy. We are not getting the explosion in jobs like we did before, which would say the economy is really heating up. And eventually we're going to start to have real, true labor, sh real labor shortages, not labor shortages caused by not paying people enough. Because what we have here is labor shortages by because by not paying people enough and that's why you see that good wage gain going up but here's what the feds want to do the feds want to cut uh, increase interest rates again to slow down the economy to stop wage increases because they claim they fear that the corporate corporations would then pass those wage increases in the in the in the form of inflation on to the americans i want you to think about this the workers getting more money is a problem for the Federal Reserve who says, I am going to increase the interest rates to cause more people to be laid off so that there will be less pressure to pay people more, to pay people a living wage. But here is the most, it's the saddest part about this. Here's the evil part about this. Look at your screen. Title of the article from The Common Dreams. Corporate windfall profits surged to $1 trillion as a year, a year as working people suffer. Big business is gaslighting all of us. So I want you to, I want you to keep this in mind. More people are getting jobs. We don't have a shortage of workers. Right, We have a whole bunch of people we can bring into the country if we really want to. But even with what we have here, 
We don't have a shortage. What we have is a shortage of pay. They don't want to pay people what they're worth. And what the, what the feds are saying is it would be inflationary if we don't get more people laid off so that we don't have a job market demanding more pay. Okay, hold on. So they want the working class to pay the penalty for asking for higher wages, which they're fearful the corporate state will pass on as, inf as to the people as inflation. But look at the title. Corporate windfall profits. An analysis released Thursday shows that 722 of the world's top corporations made combined windfall profits of $1 trillion per year in 2021 and 2022, each year over a trillion, as people across the planet struggle to meet basic needs due to the price hikes that businesses have used to pad their bottom lines. The humanitarian group Oxfam and Action found that the companies racked, raked a $1.09 trillion in windfalls profit and windfall profit is defined as profits over and above what your normal profit range used to be. What your normal profit used to be, they've made a trillion dollars above what that used to be. And let's ask the question, what is that trillion dollars? Where did that money come from? That money didn't come from them being more productive. That money didn't come from them, doing, them building something new because corporate guys build nothing. Shareholders build nothing. They are simply parasites who work off of you. So now, they decided they were going to raise the rates of everything, irrespective of whether it should or should not. They raised the rate of bread, wheat, everything. Not the farmers didn't get paid more. The farmers got the same money. The distributors, the people who control capitalism, made it all. That trillion dollars, that's who it went to. So therefore, the inflation was caused by these corporate goons. And the Fed Reserve, after having a good jobs report that says more people are working, more people are getting jobs, and the wages are increasing ever so slightly, and in order, in order to mitigate not getting these wage increases, they want the feds want to throw us into a recession to prevent the corporate guys from having to pass along the extra money that American, the working class deserves, the working class earned. But nobody is asking the corporate, the corporations to pay more taxes. In fact, we want to even give them more. We want to give them tax cuts. They're increasing our prices and for increasing our prices and getting more money, we want to reward them with more tax cuts. To my brothers and sisters on the right, what part of that do you see as equitable or fair? How can you massage within your minds to defend the evil from within the corporate state? Again, that's an 89% increase in total profits compared to the average between 2017 and 2020, according to the Oxfam and, Ac and Action Aids analysis of Forbes Global 2000 ranking of the world's largest companies, a major windfall during a period in which extreme poverty and hunger surged. The two groups found that 45 Energy corporations made an average of $237 billion a year in windfall profits, meaning above and beyond what they would have profited anyway, while food and beverage corporations, banks, big pharma, and major retailers also cashed in on the cost of living crisis that has seen more than a quarter of a billion people in 58 countries hit by acute food insecurity in 2022. So these criminals, these legal criminals have decided that they will just take the money. They will just charge. That mother that had to drive to work, her gas bill doubled, gasoline bill doubled just because they could. They didn't have to go ahead and hold you up with a gun. They didn't have to break into your home. Our economic system gives them the right to simply steal from you. That's the design of the economic system. 
And for those who are there to protect it and say, oh, this is the best system. This is the way it has to be. There are better ways. There are better ways. The windfall profits of leading food and beverage companies in 2021 and 2022 would be enough to cover the $6.4 billion funding gap needed to deliver life-saving food assistance in East Africa, a more than twice over Oxfam and Action Aid noted. People are sick and tired of corporate greed, Amitath Behar, Oxfam's interim executive director, said in a statement. It's obscene that corporations have raked in billions of dollars in extra Extraordinary windfall profits while people everywhere are struggling to afford enough food or basics like medicine and heating. But he, the obscene portion is in as much as they're making all this profit. Windfall profits. They are still saying we want tax cuts. So they're hurting the people by having people spend more of their money to them, giving it to them, legal robbery. And at the same time, they're saying, and we don't want to pay taxes for this windfall that we were just lucky to, to get because we created inflation. And then our Federal Reserve want we, the people, to pay higher interest rates to slow down the economy because of these thugs who decide to rip us off. And we have a bunch of folks coddling Folks who don't have a pot to do you know what in, coddling these corporatists who are ripping us off royally? Whatever happened to critical thinking? And that is why you hear DeSantis and all these guys talk about woke. They don't want you to be woke. They don't want you to be intelligent. They want you to remain dumb. They want you to be able to say things like, Biden inflation is Bidenomics and, and not listen. I gave a full explanation of where inflation came from. I gave a full explanation, and Eric Hayes is still saying Biden inflation is Bidenomics. What's the thought process? What's the critical thinking? The evidence is there, and that tells you a lot. It tells you a lot. Anyway, so folks, we know what we have to do. We have to de elect all of those who are responsible for allowing corporations to do what they've done. And we need to threaten price controls yesterday if these guys don't stop. And if they decide, well, if you try price controls, we are going to reduce production, we nationalize then. We don't allow the corporate thugs to control the livelihoods, the existence of America. People would always try to come, well, if you tell the private sector what to do, they would just stop doing, and then we just, okay, if they stop doing, then we'll do. We can do it a lot more efficient because we don't have to satisfy the, 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 the shareholders. So if they want to penalize the American citizenry, we can penalize them because they need us more than we need them. Remember that. They don't exist without us. We have to start exerting our own power. And our power is a lot, a lot, a lot more powerful than theirs. Don't ever forget that. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.